Herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Episode von Journey to the Chateau. Und es gab viele Fragen, was wir als erstes machen. Wir haben ähm, Rote Johannes Bergelé gemacht. Äh, auf unserem neuen Ofen. Das war toll. Und ähm, wir haben viele andere Sachen, die, die so im Hintergrund passieren. Äh, die sind aber noch nicht kamerafertig. Bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue sur notre vlog au Château de Colombes à Sabadell. And to English speaking friends from around the world. Mm -hmm. You do it. Welcome to another episode of Journey to the Chateau. <laughs> And this episode is about our harvest of our red currants. And what we did with them. Yes. And? What did we do with them? Oh, well, we made jelly. We did. And what What else? Oh, well, Nessa had, had a little bit of an uh, emergency surgery. She's mm. right here with us. She's perfectly fine. Um, but she had to... She was uh, not doing so well for few days and now she is just her wonderful little self again she's right down here <laughs> listening to every word we're saying and um, right now the the lavender is in full bloom around here and it's just so pretty now and I know we're not in Provence uh, where they have whole fields of them but it is just lovely and geraniums are blooming Our hydrangeas are coming, so we are getting to into into the summer mode, and it's absolutely delightful. It is. And now our red currants. Yes.
Okay, so what I'm doing now is um, I have a bowl, a nice clean bowl, put a strainer on top of it and a linen towel that is washed and all, uh, but it is discolored because I use this only for jam and jelly making. So that um, once the berries are ready, which they're not yet. Let's see, but I think there's slowly, yeah, that's slowly coming. Um, once that steaming process is done, I'll put all the husks in here and wait a couple of minutes because it is horribly hot. And then I'm squeezing the juices out of it. So it's kind of pulp, and, but it's then almost clear and it will be a beautiful jelly. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off now, if I can find <laughs> the right knob. <laughs> okay, so we're going to see how much we have. Be very careful, it's very hot. And of course it is never quite right. So let me do one thing here real quick. Okay. I am putting that, putting that right here. No, maybe right here, just the thing. And I will take this and if you could get out of my way for a sec. And you too, Colin, that would be lovely. Okay, so this is now off. I turned the stove off. But what, what I have to do is getting it out in here. Look at that. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Okay, so that is one liter precisely. Again, be very careful, it, this is all very hot. So I'm gonna put this in the confiturier immediately. So we have one liter and now how much more? We'll find out. Dare you? How rude. <laughs> okay. Do not wear clothing that can stain. <laughs> You're wearing white today. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect exactly. choice. <laughs> so, this is 1.5 liter. Okay, so. So it's 400 grams per uh, 1,000 milliliters, so one liter. So that means it's 600 gram of sugar for this amount. Okay. However, we're not done. No, we still have this. Yes. Let me put that here. Don't really feel like burning myself a lot. Actually, if I can prevent it, I don't even want to burn myself a little bit. Okay, so goes in here, and now what I prepared earlier, the bowl. Uh, it's a squeak, I mean, squeaky clean sink. So you cannot squeeze this right now. This is way too hot. Right. And there's no urgency. So we're leaving this. Um, this might be another 100 milliliter or so. That is another, what, I don't know, cup. Careful, there's someone behind you. It's another good cup or two of juice that comes out of this. Right, Lizzie? Yes. So, but we let that cool down because I really don't want to burn my hands. Okay, sounds good. There we go. 
Oh, one gram too many. We need much, much many, many matches. Okay. That's good. It's still too hot, but look at that. Oh yeah, there will be a lot of extra juice in there. Yes. So, what we can do though, Try to get a hold of us. Apparently. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit longer because this is it's already good. at least a cup. So this is two cups. Two more cups. Yes, it's uh, 400 milliliter. Right. So that is basically two, almost two liters of juice. Isn't that fantastic? Yes. Then it's, it's definitely worth as it's much. Worth, yes, it's worth squeezing that out to get that extra well, yes. juice. But it's twice as much as we had from, from last year. Right. Oh, yeah. And uh, now we bring it to a boil. Um, by the way, in our... Uh, we have these these um, completely de clean clean oh, <laughs> completely clean jars. Um, they are now in the oven at a hundred degrees. Right. So that is uh, centigrade. That is basically where water boils is a hundred. So that means they they are sterilized without having to be in water. But I did boil the lids. Right. Because. Um, if you put rubber covered lids in an oven, <laughs> it's not good. Not good. Uh, no, that's not no. Okay. okay, so we just have to wait for that to come to a boil. That we do. Okay. So they're completely sterile at this point. Isn't that something? Great. The one thing I have to keep in mind now, because they're not upside down on a towel and have cooled down already, that don't grab them with my hands because I've done that. <laughs> what? No, it's true. It's sad, but true. So, let me see what the temperature says, because it is at a... Oh, it is actually doing a, a little boil there. It is boiling. Right. And you want this at 105 degrees. Don't ask me why. That's what every recipe tells you to have. Funny thing, it is actually boiling, and it says 99.5 degrees centigrade. Now, now we're at 100. I don't even know if it can go. <laughs> Maybe it just said, no, it's 100, you're good. It's basically what's a rolling boil, so. Yes. Okay. And I, I, I can, Say that standing in front of this is actually quite it's quite warm okay so in goes the sugar slowly don't dump it all at once because you don't want to have a mound on the bottom did that too Now we're going to let this come right back up to a nice boil for a couple of minutes and then magic will happen. It will become jam. Or no, jelly in this case. Jelly, yes.
Now we still have more red currants on that shrub, right? Uh, which we'll harvest soon, but we also have a wild plum and it's it's not a mirabelle it's it's weird it's a little they're, they're like this this big and it's just adorable and i was uh sitting on the loner mower yes <laughs> our, our loner yes <laughs> i did actually mow it felt quite good um but because the grass is so tall that that thing said after like 30 40 minutes says you know what let me shut down for an hour and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> the loner mower tends to overheat often. So it just sort of shuts down and we have to let it sit for a while, cool off, and then you can get back to... But we, we did, so I, I, so I, I did uh, quite get a lot of mowing done, which was fantastic. And I was mowing at a stretch next to, it's like this big hedge, wild hedge, and and I thought, what on earth is on the ground? So it's actually these little plums. They're really adorable. So we're going to get them, juice them, and make another uh, batch of jelly, but a completely different kind. Right, because it's going to be combined with the remainder of the red currants. Right, so that's yeah. going to be really interesting. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it's actually, or I'm talking my down, depending on who you ask. Um, so that that is going to be a good combo because it looks like it's going to be a really great color and mm -hmm. i hope it's going to be a good taste yeah. <laughs> it should taste great well right. we, let's hope so let's hope so so we also have uh, an update to our uh, apple espalier yes uh, so you can check out how they're doing and what our plans are for those so we're debating what we do with the espaliers because um, I already cut a whole bunch back, so they need to be very short so that they're compact and stay in their rows. Here I have two um, tops. So one of them I am going to cut at the third. Okay, so that's gone. So we can put extensions on the... What's that? The espalier, actually. <laughs> well, it's the, the, the wooden, wooden framework. The, yeah, yes, the... Um, this one grows, grew ex extremely tall. This is another one that still needs to go. And then we have a third one here, which I'm gonna keep also very short. So this can now be tied up and it can grow up and then we keep it at, the, at whatever height we want this to be. Right. Stop this, I, I did, see I, I did, uh, it's actually one too long. I took them already down. They had actually quite a lot of growth with a whole compost container full of cuttings, which is nice for the compost. Um, so these each now have one, and this is actually astoundingly full with apples. It is, yes. So I'm really quite amazed by that. Um, here, yeah. So this is a good example. This grew out quite a bit and has then yet another little growth. Um, so I left this way too long, so I'm gonna cut this far shorter. I cut here. Right. And this we're leaving. Yeah. Same with this. Same with this, and... Yeah, this one actually, they all four grew about the same amount. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty and good. And it has less apples on it, but... Uh, all things considered, we just planted them in the spring that they actually uh, had, had apples. Uh, I, f I find amazing. Yeah.
Hi everyone. Well, we woke up this morning to see this going on right outside the front gates of the chateau. We're not really quite sure what it is that's happening, uh, so we're going to wait and see and then go out to have a look. So this is what the workers were putting up right in front of the chateau. And definitely not a very attractive pole where we just had some beautiful landscaping. Uh, we have some theories about what this might be for, uh, but that's not even the worst of it. So after they finished this one, they came down the road. And then they put up this one. Right here, you can see that's our farmhouse jeet, and that's our hangar. And here you can see that they put up another one right here. And not to be outdone, they crossed the road and they put one right here. Now, having looked at those, and I'm looking at them right now, it's uh, considering that, that this is the most important um, building in this area, historically, yes. historically in, in this area, mm. besides the church, which is the most important religious building. Mm. And they just put these poles, poles in there. No idea what they're for. It's an, no. it's, it's, it's an, it's a disaster. Now, if it is for the, uh, glass fiber optic, which is possible, right? They are trying to connect our garage, which is uh, on the, on, on the right side. Mm. So that's the, the Remis. Uh, they're trying to connect, um, and I looked at the, the map, that is the area they say, oh, you can have internet in an area that's not even inhabited, instead of doing the areas that should be or are inhabited. Um, yeah, and the one thing that we do, we want to point out is, is that we know that uh, this has ha been happening all over France with uh, getting everyone hooked up to, you know, high speed internet with optic, the fiber yes. optic, right? And what we've seen all over France, uh, because of all the, the problems with blocking roads and traffic problems, is that most of the places we've seen, these are all been all underground. Yes. It's all alongside the roads where they're digging ditches and they're burying this in the ground and they're doing all this underground. And why they would decide right next to our chateau that they would put them up on poles. I, we just can't even comprehend it's, why they would do that. It looks absolutely disgusting. It's such an eyesore now to look out. Just in the courtyard, two of the poles are right there outside yep. Yep. Uh, of the gate. It's so, uh, incompetence and bureaucracy is well and alive no mm. matter where you go. <laughs> but I will email our mayor tomorrow and ask her what on earth this is supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, it really, if it is the the uh, high-speed internet that should be connected over there on the complete different wing, and yeah, okay. if it in, indeed is, and they try to connect the non-inhabited part, <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But you get a pension at the end of the day, right? Maybe. Right. <laughs> right. In any case, so we're trying to maybe get this reversed because this is horrible yeah so this friday's episode is going to be about uh a dinner that we made for tony and jane yes three course dinner yes and it was sort of a celebration of the arrival of our cooker <laughs> which they hadn't seen yet they hadn't been here to see that uh they also hadn't seen the uh, upper cabinets or the vasalier and the, the tiling uh, right uh, the backsplash tile right yes so and, it, and that was only and they only hadn't been here for like 10 days so they, they hadn't seen any of that stuff. So that's how much stuff we had actually have done in the kitchen in the last yes. week. So uh, well, well, a lot of people will relate to this. So when you do a kitchen renovation or a bathroom renovation, it's the prep work and the prep work. So you do and work and of the blue things come together and then it's really, really fast. Right. So it's right. lovely. Right. And so what did you make for the dinner for Friday? Well, it was uh, a starter with uh, a local goat cheese and it was almost like a burger. So it was tomatoes, slices, um, 
I think there is a tractor coming by soon. Anyways, so tomato slices, uh, you know, tomatoes, not from our garden, but with a slice of local goat cheese and it's delicious. It's creamy and it's fantastic yeah. with a shallot vinaigrette and then a white wine cocova. Right, right. And you did dessert. Yes, and I made a dessert. And so we will have that as part of Friday's episode, the whole preparation of the dinner and uh, showing uh, Jane and Tony stopping by and seeing the kitchen. Yes. No. So, <laughs> go ahead. If you like this episode, please recommend us to your friends. We are slowly growing, but we're growing and we appreciate it. Uh, our last episode has over 620 comments so as of this you. moment. Yes. That is absolutely fantastic for us. So very much appreciated. And I think I've about replied to 500 and some. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate all your support and your, your wonderful comments. Mm -hmm. And on that note, see you on Friday. A biento. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.